We're here at Katsukon 2019, talking about Naginatas. <laughs> Fair. So, the Naginatas is a great form. We're part of the East Coast Naginatas Federation, which is a smaller uh, regional federation of the United, uh, United States Naginatas Federation. It's part of a worldwide organization overall. We do have world championships, competitions that we do uh, every four years. We do have regional competitions as well. So the question really comes down to what is Naginata? If you look at the, the Naginata itself, it is a pole arm, it is a bladed weapon. So you would basically put a katana on the end of a long staff, so wow. you have a lot of reach to it. Yeah. Unlike a, a lot of other co uh, concepts of pole arms, it's not a spear. We don't do a lot of thrusting. Interesting. And we do a lot more cutting and slicing. So it does take a lot of power, but done more from finesse rather than strength. Just to kind of give you an idea, I'm going to put this in your hand real quick. Okay? I want you to hold this a little bit back here and lock that into your hip here. Okay? Lower it down. Okay? Not quite that low. Right there. Okay. The actual weight of a Naginata, the blade itself, is only about three pounds. Okay. okay, give or take. So when you're looking at the weight of the Naginata being about three pounds, if you think about the forward inertia that it takes to get this moving overhead, and then I simply let go and let it drop on my targets, yeah. imagine that inertia, that's only three pounds. Yeah. Wow. When you have all of that coming in, you land this on somebody's head, they will split. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. It's a lot of power in your hands, but it's a very graceful weapon. In fact, one of the most interesting things about this weapon is uh, it's actually dominated by women in the world. So roughly 98% of the practitioners in Japan are women. Wow. Outside of Japan, it's about a 50-50 mix. Yeah. So uh, there are plenty of guys that do this, mostly outside of Japan, though. Yeah. That said, we do spar. We have a different version of the weapon that we use specifically for sparring. So not unlike a kendo. Not unlike kendo. Where kendo, the shinai has a bamboo blade. We have a bamboo blade as well. You can see it right here, it's two different slats. So it's got some give to it when it actually connects to the armor. Our armor is almost identical to kendo. There are some slight differences. The men itself is almost identical. The flaps are a little shorter. Our gloves, or kote, actually have the index finger split so we can better hold the, the uh, naginata. Mm. And then the other thing the kendo players don't like dealing with is the fact that we have shin guards. So oh, if we spar okay. kendo players, they have to wear those. <laughs> it's a very versatile but very complicated weapon because of that versatility. Because we are ambidextrous, we have to be able to fight on both sides of the body. So one stance, the oh, other. Right. And a power hand is constantly changing. So that's a little bit about it. And we're, uh, you can look us up on ecnf.net. Take a look, have a little bit of fun. We're always here at Katsukon. We've been here for the last three years, looking to go keep going. Cool. So, what is sparring like? Is it similar to kendo with their points and so forth? It is very, very similar to kendo in that regard. It is best two out of three. An actual uh, blow that would either debilitate uh, or flat out kill your opponent mm -hmm. would get a referee flag. You get two out of three referee flags, you get the point. So, matches are typically three minutes, two minute overtime if necessary, but most of the time they don't go that long. <laughs> so, and there's also forms competition though. Oh. So, which is, we place a lot of emphasis on that. It takes a lot longer to get into the armor because of the complexity of the weapon. So, gotcha. it's good times. Cool, cool. Um, are there, um, is, they want so long to get into this. Um, what's the easiest way to get into the martial art? So, depending on where you live, because there's only about 20 dojos in the country. Okay. Okay. But if you were to go to naginata.org, that is actually the USNF's website, and it does have a listing of a lot of our dojos on there, as well as contact information. So, you live in XYZ, send an email and say, hey, who's near me? We'll hook you up, tell you the closest one to you, and see what we can do to help you out. Cool. Sounds so, good. Yeah. All right, thanks so much for talking. Appreciate Thank it. You. All right. Uh, for some cutaways, could we get a little bit of the history of, 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 of when it first showed up in Japan and the uh, laws about swords and sure. how oh, sure. yeah, just, back and just go maybe for it. some of the some of the um, mm. yeah sure okay so you want me to go through the armor itself sure. uh -huh. yeah. all right so the armor itself you have uh, multiple pieces these are the shin guards both left and right they're called sumiate 
Colte, both left and right, which are also targets under themselves. Tare, which is more of a uh, kind of a hip pr uh, protector, not really a target. The doe, on the other hand, would be the target. That's more of your chest plates. And then the men, which you could uh, strike along the top of the men or a straight thrust to the throat. Wow. We can fight with either end of the weapon, so you can strike it down to the Sune with the back end of the weapon. Interesting. So, weapon showed up right around 900 AD. We don't know exactly when, but uh, it was the primary battlefield pole arm of the samurai up until about 1400 AD. Battlefield tactics changed, but the women samurai picked it up at that point, and they would use it to defend the houses. Gotcha. They found the length of it negated height and strength difference men had, so then they became quite powerful with it. In Japan, it's, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, it's about 98% women that do this art now. So you'll get a Japanese sensei who does kendo walking up to you going, Nagi nothing for a woman, yeah, put on your armor. <laughs> so we do have a lot of fun with that. Um, it did fall through the loophole of the no, no swords rule. Ah, so it, they were frequently passed down as dowries. Um, unfortunately though, you will not find too many of them now because a lot of them were melted down at the end of World War II because they needed the metal. So they went through and literally were collecting them out of houses. Oh, yeah. So there's not too many that survived. Most of the ones now, like the one we have, is a, uh, it's a replica. Yeah. So. Do we know like um, why it was designed in the first place? Was there a particular um, uh, you know, martial issue they were trying to solve? Actually, um, so here's what we more or less know, and the, uh, there's always subject to debate with the story. Sure. Right? But the Japanese order of battle back then was typically archery. You kill them way over there to begin with. Yep. Then when they get closer, you'd use your pole arm. And, uh, and earlier it was the Naginata was the primary pole arm. It gave you a, a length advantage to the swords. You would go to the sword as a backup. That was essentially the battlefield equivalent of a pistol. Yeah, gotcha. So up until the Edo period uh, it pretty much ended, that was more or less the case that the swords were a sidearm. Interesting. So, Interesting. Um, as far as what it was used for, there are plenty of stories where the Naginata can cut down horse and rider in one shot. Wow. Um, the power of it, you and you held it earlier, if you yeah. think about that, could it? Quite possibly, especially in the hands of a skilled practitioner. Sure. So, it was used to basically defend a line. There are stories of Shinto priests holding at the bottom of the hill against two armies that just kept creeping closer and they went, no. <laughs> and they defended their grounds and the armies actually couldn't make it up the hill to get a better vantage point because of these 40 Shinto priests, the Sui, sitting there at the bottom of the hill with Naginata going, no, nah, this is my spot, thank you. That's so cool. So, uh, how long have you been a practitioner and I understand you're a sensei? I am, I am. Uh, I've been doing the martial arts in general for over 30 years. Wow. I started doing Naginata in 2001. Um, I, I kind of came to it by accident because my wife was asking me if there was a weapon that moved similar to the flags from Color Guard. Mm. And I said, the only one I could think of was Naginata. And she said, can you find a class? And I laughed at her. <laughs> but I went to my uh, sensei for Iaido, which is a sword drawing art. And I said, hey, sensei, do you happen to know anybody who teaches Naginata? Said, yeah, here, call this guy. That was in 2001, I've been doing this since. Wow. So I kind of fell in love with the weapon. Um, and typically, uh, you're considered a sensei if you have students of your own, you're the head of the class, and you're a third don or higher. We stop at fifth, uh, fifth don, though. So unlike a lot of arts that'll go up like eighth, ninth, tenth, we just stop at fifth. So, yep, and by default, because I am a third don and I have students, I am a sensei. Cool. Local dojo. Um, so around here, Katsukan being in, in Maryland, there's one in Alexandria, Silver Spring, and I teach him in Asses Park. Wow, so a, a lot given the... <laughs> given the, the... Given the rarity of how many dojos there are, yeah. Yeah. So um, we've also got some in Jersey, um, Mount Holyoke has a group, so that's actually part of the college. Interesting. So in Cambridge, uh, Columbia University, and Puerto Rico are all the ones on the eastern seaboard. Interesting. I wonder why there are so many in the Easy area. It's, it's, it's I, I would be part of that problem as okay. to why we have so many. <laughs> so um, my sensei is still here. Um, and then I moved out uh, uh, and started a study group and then became a sensei and became a dojo. 
cool. So, and then another sensei moved into the area, so we got three of us in the area. Nice. So, nice. so how have you seen like the, the martial art evolve in the area? You know, have you seen people come for different reasons? I've seen people come because they, they've seen Naginata in an anime and they're like, hey, this is wonderful. I really want to check this out. I've seen other people who have come to it from other martial arts like Kendo. Mm. And they're like, hey, what, why does this keep killing us? When we, okay. So they want to know a little bit more about it. They try it out and they're like, oh, this is evil. We like this. <laughs> um, I've seen other people show up to it just because it was something that they were like, hey, what is this? Okay. And it looked different. They wanted to try it and they fell in love with it pretty quick. It is one of those arts that yeah is gonna usually grab you grab a hold of you. You put the weapon in your hand, you start playing with it, and you're like, hang on a minute. <laughs> so that's most of the time uh, people who want to do naginata, they are not out there to be completely aggressive uh, uh, because naginata does take a little bit more of a defensive lean than kendo, but not much. So you, there's still a fair amount of aggression and push there. But you tend to hold your ground a little bit more than you do with Kendo. You don't try and run through the, your, your opponent. Right. Well, I, you know, being a, I don't want to say a defensive weapon, but more of a weapon that's about you know, keeping people away, if you will. That yep. Sense. Yeah. Yep. And in fact, um, Kendo has an aspect of it where you will cut your target and you keep going. It's part of what they call a, 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 a Zanshin. Okay. So you kill your target and you run through them. So you'll see this a lot in Kendo matches. Now, you're not the Zanshin, on the other hand, will cut you down. And then we back off, uh, and, that, and so when we exit out after that cut occurs, the idea is, okay, now you've got to walk over your friend's body, bring it. <laughs> so if I were to cut, you simply squeeze, and the uh, whole thing drops in. So, right? The body simply goes with it to guide it. Because you need to be able to steer and control it. So obviously, just doing this and leaving it out there, be like, hey, what's up? And so you want to be able to perform your weapon in the So that's, where, uh, and if you think about it, uh, the pinkies, it, um, especially the left pinky, was always the one that you'll see in movies that gets cut off. Sword, the left hand's the power hand. Okay, so this, right, that's hugely detrimental to lose that pinky. So it's a lot more significant than we as Westerners think about because we're like, it's a pinky, whatever. Because we think here. Right. Right. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long did you use to have like, this weapon that is so long? Do you think you can approach any martial art and be a very different from what It is. Um, the, the, for instance, that same cut that I just showed you, yeah. The power hand switches multiple times when you're doing it. So for instance, I'll close the power hand. Okay, so right now my back hand here is the power hand. Switch, switch, switch just to come. So because of those kind of switches, it becomes a lot more difficult to get the hang of that you have to learn the same thing on the opposite side of the body when you do it. So um, I would say it takes the average person six months to a year to be in to be So that's also typically when you start seeing people get into armor research start in six months to a year. Kendo tends to be a lot faster. So yeah, you have to a lot of peripheral to this. So you can see the person moving, even though you're watching my eyes, right? So it's not about just sitting there staring into the eyes, because we're going where you actually see softer things so I can see everything around you. So right now I can see the fact that your body is actually not in line with going this way, but what's actually pointing that way. Okay. So now if you take it from you point it towards me, and I can see that right there. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You see it? Yeah. Yeah? Just by, wow. you can see that. Which means I am now out of position and you got me. Maybe not so much now. <laughs> right? So. Yeah, just because you're further away does not mean you can't pay attention to what's going on. So, and then if I wanted to come in and attack... Okay. Uh, that is a cool cutaway. That really is I like seeing the, seeing the footwork and how it makes it, you know... Oh man, yeah. Balance and all that. Mm -hmm. Totally.
I just saw a kid.